What's up, Bigger Pockets? My name is Tarl Yarber with Fixated Real Estate, and I'm here with my best friend in the whole wide world, Mr. Thatch Nguyen. And you guys might be wondering why you're watching this video right now, is because Thatch knows what he's doing here in Seattle, Washington, and we're gonna go over a property that he purchased that I promise you 99% of you, and, and even myself included, would never have figured out this investment deal and what he's actually doing with these properties right here behind us, which we'll go over in explicit detail here in a moment. We'll go over numbers, we'll go over the deal structure, we'll go over the simplicity that you guys can actually possibly do the same thing and make massive wealth doing real estate investing, just like what Thatch is doing here. Before we get into that though, I am really excited to, to actually talk about Thatch and find out who he is, what he's been doing, what you got going on, your story. Um, Thatch, you're not just some normal real estate investor, you got kind of a, a kind of incredible story also. So where did you come from? So, so the quick version is, uh, I was born in Vietnam in 1970. My family evacuated from Vietnam in 1975 during the war. My family came over here with 100 bucks in our pocket, one suitcase for eight of us. We started uh, in Seattle with basically from the bottom. We lived in a homeless shelter when we got here. And um, we lived in transitional houses for many years. And in 1990, 1977, we uh, finally arrived in Seattle. We lived in Rainy Valley for a couple of years, and then uh, I went to school like a normal kid, graduated from high school, from college. I wasn't super inspired what I wanted to do, which was fix an airplane like my brother and them. And I got into real estate in 1991. I was 21 years old, and I wasn't sure how I wanted to do real estate, but I just got into selling real estate. I didn't do well in the first three years, 91, 92, 93, but in 1994, I met a real estate coach, and he taught me how to go out there and be a good salesperson, go out and make a lot of money selling real estate, which I took that by to heart and I just went out and just started doing, you know, real estate, you know, full time. And I, you know, was making a million bucks a year at the age of 27, 29 years wow. old. So I did that well. Yeah. But then when I met this other mentor and he says, selling real estate will make you rich, but owning real estate will make you wealthy. Wow. You want to learn how to sell real estate and be rich, but then take the money and pull some of that money off the table and start parking your money in real estate so you can actually have wealth. So 20 years from now, you can work when you want to work, where you want to work, anywhere in the world. And that was when the light came on for me, when I went from being a realtor to a full-time, long-term, passive income investor. So I guess that would be like similar to if you flip houses or wholesale Same all the thing. time, and you're not a realtor, and you're always making, you could get rich doing that. That's we right. got rich doing that, but yeah. I wasn't getting wealthy. We weren't keeping any of these houses. That's right. And actually, it wasn't until I became friends with Thatch a few years ago that I'm like, I should be keeping some of these. We gotta that's keep what, these. Yeah, that's when we started doing Burr method and rental properties and stuff as well. Right. Uh, but right now, what's your what's your average passive net income that you're making on rentals right now? Uh, right now, every month I make over hundred thousand dollars a month in positive cash flow after everybody's paid. That's insane, right? Okay. So that's without working anymore. So if you're selling real estate or flipping houses or doing all stuff, you got to keep doing that all the time. That's right. And now Thatch is getting into that that level of income, and it's re incredible. Um, so let's go strictly now into what we're gonna go over in this video with this project here. Yep. Because how he's been able to develop that is thinking differently with some of these projects versus me. I've flipped houses for years and how did I like, you know, all I saw was a house flip and that was it, right? And if you invest in properties as a rental, all you see is a landlord, a rental, right? Tell us a little bit about this project here in Seattle. Yeah, so for me, you guys, it started with, you know, if, if I wanna grow my passive income to the next benchmark, which is $250,000 a month, I gotta start thinking outside the box because if you have to create more passive income, you need to have more money to buy more property. And the problem why the Burr method is so powerful is if you do it right, you can get all your money out yeah. and you can keep deploying it over and over. And so my brain and my wife Cameron started thinking, how do we do more without actually having more cash? And because we don't want investors, like we don't own, most of our property we own, we own it ourselves. We don't own it with multiple capital investors, we own it ourselves. And so, one of the things we look for is today now is uh, you know a house that'll beat up with with a backyard. So okay. we put you know detached unit on it. Detached unit. All right. Uh, we look for how we tear now we can put multi unit on it. Yeah. And so this property you got this is zone townhouse zoning in Seattle it's called L R three, and we go after L R three, and most builder go after L R three to build townhouses to sell. Mm -hmm. We go after L R three in certain area to buy them to bid them to keep them as a rental property. Mm -hmm. And so this property, when I bought it, this was a tire four unit, and there was a fixer on that lot right there. So there's another house there. Yeah. So yeah. And why I said 99% of most investors would miss this deal because an investor would have rehabbed the house, yep. flipped it, made 100, 100, 150,000. Yep. 
we have the fourplex, maybe make two, three hundred thousand and call it good, make a total of two, three, four hundred thousand dollars, and they out of here. And Which done. is a lot of money. Like, That's so a lot, a lot of, of money. Us would be like, hell yes, I'll take that check. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah. And then they gotta pay tax, and they all bitch about it. Like, god damn, where my money go? Right. <laughs> but my wife and I, we looked at this property, and the first thing we thought about was tearing the whole thing down because we're builder and putting eight townhouse on it. And eight townhouses would have made me probably a hundred thousand a door which is about 800,000 at the whole complex. Yeah. But my wife, who is the smart one, she always think of long-term investment. How do we actually, cause you know, the thing is, you know that, mm -hmm. it takes months to fix a house and sell them. Yep. It takes years to get a house permitted and fix them and then sell them. Yep. And if you don't start keeping them, you gotta start over the cycle every time, over and over. How these townhouses, it takes a year to get permit and a year to build. Mm -hmm. So really the cycle is every two years you build something and you keep selling them, you just never actually have anything. Cause you gotta start over every time. So my wife said, why don't we keep the fourplex? Because this thing is worth at least 900000 to a million. And we have the lot for 500000 We paid $1.5 million for this property. And she said, let's keep that and then build on this. And then now we're building three nice 1,800 square foot townhouses. We're going to sell for 900000 each. We're going to take the money, you guys, and we're going to do something with the money that's really cool on this property over here. And we're going to get into all that. We're going to yeah. walk this property here in a moment so you guys can see what they've done. But when I was here last, he torn down the house, this thing was just dirt. And that was only like a few months ago. And now these are up and there's three townhome units on there. He's got the fourplex, he's got it rented out. He hasn't even like touched it up much. Yeah. Uh, I was calling him a slumlord e earlier, but that's a joke. Uh, <laughs> he, so he's gonna mess around with that. And what he's gonna do in the backyard with this lot alone, is gonna make buco bucks and it's yeah. gonna be insane. Uh, so let's quickly, yep. let's go let's go walk some of this property yep. so you guys can see it and what's a little different about it. It's a new build. Uh, the, so this fourplex, you did, have you done anything to this fourplex yet? So this fourplex, you guys, it used to be one bed and one bath, and we was getting 1200 bucks, and we put in a wall, and we made him two bed and one bath for all the unit, and by putting a, spending $5,000 on putting a wall up, I went from $1,200 a month in rent, now I get $2,000 a month in rent. All so for adding another bedroom. For 5000 5, bucks per unit. And some of you guys might be thinking, how the hell do you get $2,000 a month for rent in a fourplex? I'll tell you how. It's Seattle, Washington. That's so it. that's how. That's it. <laughs> yeah, and that's the other key too, where you buy rental is going to make a big difference on how to get your passive income growing fast. And so now for those of you guys in other parts of the U.S., uh, it's the same thing. If you go from a one bedroom to a two bedroom, you're going to increase your rents. And it's more valuable to do that uh, than maybe even update the kitchen, right? So, or update the bathroom. So it's yeah. the number of door, number of bedrooms is far more important. Yeah. And than the thing else. is, I know you guys in this area, the type of renter, so I understand how they think. Mm -hmm. And for them, they like to want location more than square footage. Yeah. And so I know that if I put a wall and make them two bedroom, they're okay with having a two bedroom in the same space, but they can actually rent it. They can have two friends live there and mm -hmm. they can share the 2000. So it's cheaper for each person yeah. versus them by themselves for one bedroom. Okay, See? yeah. So if you guys were looking at this thing, right, which is a nice little fourplex, I see, as a house flipper, I immediately see, okay, I need to touch up the paint here. This is a little worn out. That's vinyl siding. I don't know if I like it. The roof is a little messed up. I got to fix this, 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 get maximum value. Who knows what the units are looking like inside. And I'm trying, I'm already spending money. I'm going to spend a couple hundred grand fixing this thing up as we get into it. That's right. But as, and at a traditional landlord, you might be looking at this going like, how could I just maximize cash flow yeah. and not worry so much about appreciation right. and, uh, and all that capital gains that you get from selling the property. Uh, and Thatch looks at it as, well, how can I maximize cash flow? That's right. But then also maximize the actual lot itself That's and right. all the other components with it, which he's getting into something on this building, which is pretty, pretty awesome, which we're going to talk about when we get more into and doing it itself. with little capital as possible. Mm -hmm. These property you got at the end of the day, it's a almost a full burr, meaning I almost got pretty much all my equity out of this at the end of the day. And most of us, when we talk about burr, we're thinking single family homes, right? And uh, and that's what we do, single family home. But you could burr apartment complexes. You that's could burr right. land. That's <laughs> you right. can burr that's right. everything. That's so right. it's incredible. Down the street, you guys, I did five brand new townhouses just like this. Five, I kept them, and I got all my cash out of it. And I get five grand a month, and that's zero money in. And I got two hundred, two point five million dollars equity in that property right down the street. So on this property, it's going to be over 15 property rental I own in this one block. Yeah, he was uh, doing and burr, for those of you guys, is buy it, rehab it, rent it, refinance yeah. it, repeat. He was doing burr long before uh, Bigger Pockets coined it or Brandon Turner coined it. And he didn't know what it was called, but it's right. kind of funny how it works. But. So Tar said, what am I going to grow up? I don't know. I'm yeah. having fun being a kid doing this real estate game. That's right. So <laughs> one day he'll be a real investor like me, right? You just got to stick to flipping houses. You know? yeah. So, uh, But let's go in. We can't go into these because they're yeah, right. occupied and rented out. But let's go ahead and start walking the, the townhomes. 
because this he bought this as a package deal uh, in together. Was it the same seller? Yep, same seller. So same seller, and he sold these two buildings and these two lots. And most people, this was a single family home here, and this was the fourplex. Most of us would look at it as we just got to deal with the buildings that are existing, or you talked about a builder would say tear them all down, right? A landlord would say rent them all out, yeah. and then what that just done is done. Let's do all of it. How to maximize to the highest best use? Correct. Based on standing from passive income. Passive That's income. the key. So what about these? Let's talk about these. Yep. So you have. Can you guys see the camera here? You got one, two, three, right? On one lot. So just to give you an idea, this lot is 5,000 square feet, 50 by 100. Most area, 5,000 square feet, you got a single family home. In this area, I go after townhouse zoning. In this area, I can put three townhouse on 5,000 square feet, which three is houses crazy, on five right? Feet. Okay. What's that? Uh, this is one house. This is 1,800 square feet. Okay, once all this is in, they have their own little fence, their own little courtyard for themselves. This is one house, this is another house, and then that one back there is another house. So on this, what did you buy this lot for with the house on it? I bought the whole package for $1,550,000. Okay, so 1.55, which we'll go into the numbers in explicit detail yep. uh, at the end with our easels and paper so you guys can see all that. So you got 1.55. If this was on its own a single family home, what do you think this single family home would have been worth just as is by itself? Roughly? On the townhouse only, right? Where it was, yeah. Where it was? Before it's, you tore it down. Right. We probably seven hundred fifty thousand. Okay, so seven fifty for this by itself. Yep. You tore down the house. Yep. You got three units. Which how much will each of these units sell for? Uh, by the time I'm finished, uh make about five hundred thousand in profit. Well, how much would each sell? Oh, nine hundred thousand each. Nine hundred thousand for each of these, right? So that's what, two point seven million. Yep. Right? Seven fifty in to buy plus rehab construction. Yep. And you're making how much per? Uh, making about 150, 175,000 per, per each. Unit, unit. So about 500,000 total, yep. right, roughly. Yep. And with that money, you plan on Taking that money, spending it? I'm gonna buy me a, a bag of chips and a Subway sandwich, and then after that, I'm gonna reinvest that so I can actually get more passive income. And you're gonna put it into? I'm gonna put it into this property next door. That's awesome, right? So when you, what do you mean? You're gonna fix up the fourplex? Yeah, I'm gonna show you how come on. Okay, so this right now is a four unit. It's all two bed and one bath now. And when I take this $500,000 that I'm making from there, I'm gonna take that 500,000, you guys, and I'm gonna take that money and I'm gonna shift it and put it in this backyard. And what I'm gonna do with this backyard is I'm gonna build six micro apartments. The average unit is gonna be 300, 300 square feet each. Okay, it's gonna be five one bedroom and one three bedroom. By the time I get done with it, it'd be nice. It's gonna, it's gonna look good together, and that building right there is gonna bring me probably twelve to thirteen thousand dollars a month in positive cash flow. That building right there. So I'm gonna take this five hundred thousand, park it over there, and then get twelve to thirteen thousand a month in positive cash flow. And in this building, I'm getting eight grand right now in positive cash flow. So that's almost twenty, twenty, twenty-one thousand a month, which is about two hundred forty thousand dollars a year in positive cash flow. Off of one deal. Off of one property from one owner. So if you were to simplify all this, yes. right? So just a, the straight question. So if you were to simplify, give any advice for any investor yes. right now and say, how do you look at deals yes. differently? Like how do you look at, how would you, versus how do you get focused on only one type of deal? Yep. And how do you broaden your mind to start looking at every possibility? Yep. On a Good deal? question. What kind of, give us a few points on that. So when I was started, you guys, I started as a real estate agent. As a real estate agent, and you look down the road, the farther you can think is a real estate agent was list these property. Okay, that's the farther you can ever think beyond that. If you're a wholesaler, what would you think? You think beyond the farther you can think is maybe wholesaler or maybe flip it later when you have some money. A flipper would think flipping it. A builder would think uh, 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 tearing these down. So the tip for you guys is you have to start with 10, 20 year out and ask yourself 10, 20 years from now, what does your lifestyle look like? How much money you have coming in every single month, right? How many door do you need? And then from there, now you think long-term. So when you think 
passive income, you find deal that match passive income. If you think wholesale, you find deal that match wholesale. You think flip, you find house that match flip. Because you can never find a flip that give you these type of return because your mindset is thinking flip. Your mindset is thinking wholesale. So the tip I will tell people, if you want to find better margin deal or deal like this, you got to think like a long-term passive income investor. Because now, Paul, when I think of this, I start my day thinking, can this property meet a burr? If it doesn't meet a burr, can I build on it? If it doesn't meet a burr, I mean build on it, can I build, can I, can I flip, flip it? it? If it doesn't meet a flip, can I assign it? Yeah. And if it doesn't, can I just list it for the owner? Uh -huh. Back then, I started from the bottom up. Mm. And so what happened if it started up, you just stop wherever your mind can extend, right? Yeah. So the key for me now is that I stand from, every day stand from an investor who want to create passive income. So when I go out there and door knock and find property, law of attraction will give me what I think about and this is what I find all the time. I, I just picked up another site just like this last week. And wow. now one property is going to make me $1 million. That's insane. Yeah. So I guess like that's something that I struggled with for many, many years. To sum up with that said, I only thought six months out yeah. right, all the time. I need to flip houses. And that's yeah. all I found. I found a ton of flips. Yeah. And all I would do is flip. When I was a wholesaler, all I found was wholesales, right. right? And I love and that you said that. And builder, all they think about is build more. Yes. Yeah. So it's niching yourself. Now, I do believe that at some point you got to niche yourself, but you niched yourself up here. And then work back and work down. down. That's right. right. That's the key. Yes. That's awesome. That's Thank the key. you. That's a great point. So I hope you guys get that. Think long term. I thought six months forever, and only the last few years of my life, I'm actually thinking ten years out, and that's really challenging for me still. Uh, but being able to do that, you start seeing so many other exit strategies. Now, here's the thing, though. Just because you think long term doesn't mean you're gonna stop wholesaling. Yeah. Doesn't mean you stop flipping. So when I stand from here and a deal come to me, I can quickly analyze and go, Burr, yeah. new construction, flip. If it's a flip, then I know I'm doing I know I'm clear what I'm doing it for. I'm gonna do it so I can get the money so I can roll it to something better. Right? If it's an opportunity where I can't burr it, then I'm gonna just go ahead and build new construction and be done with it. Awesome. Like I'm doing eight unit over in Greenwood where it doesn't meet the burr, so I'm just gonna build it and I'm gonna sell it. Mm -hmm. The property I just bought last week, it meet the burr. So I'm gonna build it and I'm gonna keep it. All right? So for me, when I stand here and work backwards, I'm not, I'm not telling people to stop flipping houses. I'm telling when you stand from here, you clear on you flipping houses for well, this house for a specific reason, because it match the flip. Mm -hmm. So you don't stop doing it, you just have an end game why you're doing it for it, clearly. Awesome. That's the key. So another question. Yep. So if you can answer this shortly and concisely, yep. just a few tips. How do you develop a mindset yeah. of abundance and a mindset of thinking long term yeah. when it comes to real estate investing yeah. versus a mindset of short -term. the now short term? Right. I need cash today. That's right. Uh, I think the an the simple answer is who you hang out is who you become. That's it. If you hang out with people that are always talking about flipping, and one guy says, yeah, I flipped 30 home, then what are you gonna say? Shit, you did 30 home, I'm gonna do 35 home, right? <laughs> so everybody's keeping up with the Jones. If you're gonna keep with any Jones, right? Keep up with the Jefferson, who actually have all the rental property, keep up with them, and you think and work and, and master like them. That's, That's it. That's straightforward. That's it. So who you hang around is who you become. Well, actually, instead of the Jefferson, the win. The win. The win. <laughs> That's his name. <laughs> think, hang out with the win so you can always win. <laughs> awesome. Good advice there. So we're gonna go keep walking around the uh, rest of these projects and stuff. It's kind of hard to imagine you're gonna fit six apartment units right here. Go all the way to the alley. Okay. How high is it gonna be? It's gonna be uh, three stories, just like this. Three stories. Just like this. Imagine this building is gonna go over here, and there's gonna be six units. Crazy. Imagine this building right here. This building, moving the whole process right here, uh -huh. and there'll be six. Bedrooms. So to summarize, also guys, selling these, reinvesting back in here. Refinance out eventually, yeah. no money in. You got it, brother. Right, that's the it. ultimate bird. You guys wanna see what one of these projects look like? Let's go ahead and walk this building over here and also see the view at the top. You'll wonder why Seattle's so expensive. So, the, now what it comes, are you the one that designs all these builds and stuff? Or uh, not? Me, Cammy, uh, and the architect. The architect, yep. So how much actual input do you put in? A lot, a lot. We meet, we meet every time we have a, uh, uh, Every time they draw, we have to go back down there and we gotta look at it, we put the input, and we don't like something, we tell them again, and then they correct it. So if we take one time, three times, and tell us, and then we think an idea, and then, then it goes into a submit. And are you doing, I thought your wife does all that. She does. <laughs> so I, I, I just, I just, I just, I just tag them off. I put in my two cents. Sometimes it, it's good. Sometimes my wife says, forget it. I don't want that two cents. That's no good. We, so, we, we need to do this as a rental. So, uh, and if, in, if you could summarize, like in a, in a few short, in a few yeah. word sentences or uh, or steps, uh, 
what kind of advice can you give when it comes to working with your spouse oh, as a business man. partner? That's awesome, dude. Yeah. Um, I realize when, I, when I'm older now, everyone was born and wired with a niche. Mm-hmm. My niche is I'm good at going out, going out there and how to go fishing and bring in the fish. My wife is good on give me the fish, I will clean it up and I have it all ready, ready to go for you. Mm-hmm. Now when I was younger, I thought, oh, I started the real estate business, damn it, you listen to me. Yeah. I tell you what to do in the kitchen, how to do in the kitchen, and then after that she's like, hey, <laughs> I got this, get the hell out of the way. And so now, um, you know, me and her, we, we're on the same page on passive income. Uh-huh. And we both want to get there, and we realize I'm good at this, she's good at that. Okay. And then we basically, everybody run their own department. So she has her own department I run, she runs. I have my own department. Lorenz has his own department. You know what I mean? Property manager has their own department. Everybody run their own department. Got it. And you stay in that department. That's it. You own that lane. That's it. Just like, just like I, the, the architect run their department. We yeah. let, give it to them. Then what are you going to do with this? So I guess step one in that would be get on the same page with your spouse That's and what right. your long-term goals are. That's right. Right? And then step two is clearly define your roles That's right. so you don't step on each other. That's right. Right? That's right. I think we both have seen and met plenty of people in our business that are couples together yeah. working. Nah. And, and I promise you we both agree on this. Yes. Why they fight is because they are stepping all over all each, over each other. Roles, all right? over each other. Yeah. There's yeah. no your lane, my right. lane. And you is the husband stepping over the wife. Yes. Because it's usually the husband's yeah. fault. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Usually the husband's fault. Right? Yeah. I need to run this. I need to control that. I know what I'm doing. But to the next point. Today, my, the wife Cam, she stepped over me today. Yeah. Which is good. <laughs> yeah. You're like, yeah. step all over me. That's fine. Yeah. If it wasn't for my wife, this would not happen. Mm-hmm. She's the who came up with it and said, let's keep the fourplex and let's tear everything else down. And I was like, oh, I didn't realize that. How you figure that? Let me tell you. Here's the number. And then we're going to show you the number here in a few minutes. So, what kind of, if you're struggling, let's say that you're not so much struggling, let's yeah. say that you already run your business, yep. it's your business, you're married, your spouse isn't involved, yeah. but you really want to get your spouse involved in some way, right. how do you convince them to want to be a part of that dream with you? Or do you have any advice on that at all? Or do you just say, hey, that's every, to each his own? Because uh, yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there of that course. would be wondering that. I would say, number one, I think if the wife and you don't have. Or, uh, or vice versa. Or vice versa. Yeah, yeah. Right? If the spouse don't have the same alignment mm-hmm. on where they want to go together, then they shouldn't be together. That's the first thing. Okay. That, that's just keeping it real. If they can actually get inspired on 10 years from now, we want to retire with this passive income. If they inspire doing it together, then it'd be easy then to enroll any spouse to do the part of the game. Okay. Like your wife, yeah. right? You guys got together, yep. you got inspired, yep. she quit her job, yep. you work together now. Yep. So I think the key thing is you got to get aligned to see that if you're gonna work together 20 years from now and where you wanna go together. If you are inspired, then after that, easy. Honey, you're good at this, I'm good at that, he's good at this, and let's go. Yeah. Like that. Awesome. So that seems like getting in alignment with each other as much as possible, on the same page. Okay. I think that's like in anything. Anything. The kids, anything. where you live, yeah. what you do, yeah. right? Anything. If it's a constant like friction yeah. in all aspects, if you have a friction on just, you know, what are you gonna eat for dinner tonight, all the time, every single night, you might have a friction on where you're gonna be 10, 15 years from now as well. So. And here, here's an example. I think most people, they live day to day. And that's why they don't have new inspiration. Yeah. So for me, I always tell people, you got to actually create the inspiring future and live in the future, in the now. Mm-hmm. So, but most people right now, they live every day, day by day, and they do business every day, day by day. And that's why they keep in the same, uh, you know, every day into the future. And that's why the results don't change. That's fantastic. Yeah. So that said, let's walk the rest of this project and see what's going so on. So give you guys an idea. These are 1800 square foot townhouse. They're all standalone, okay? You own your own property, you own your own land. There's no home dues. And this down here is the kitchen and the open living area. This is 1,800 square feet and a three story, okay? Does, these do are all people like, Do people like living in these? People love it. If you live in Seattle, in city, this is the lifestyle. There's no different than living in San Francisco. Okay. It's just, this is the lifestyle. The people who live here are usually single people, all husband and the wife. And they, they work in the Amazon, they work in downtown. They don't have cars. They, you know, they Uber everywhere. And this is the lifestyle, in city lifestyle. They love it. And it's new and modern. And when you see the rooftop deck, you're gonna know, you're gonna know why they love to live here. Yeah, everybody to each its own. I live on acreage in the mountains and all yeah. that stuff. Right here they live on this. one third of a five thousand square feet. One third with the rooftop deck. So this is an active construction site. So there are people actually working up there. We'll yeah. go through that kind of quickly. If the sound gets messed up, deal with it. So. <laughs> 
all this will be hollow floor. Hardly. Yep. Two bedrooms. We got two bedrooms, one bath, whole bath, and a little den desk area right here. Is that one? Ooh. So a little desk area that I would never put my desk in. <laughs> <laughs> so, I put my desk on the roof. That's so, right. Let's go check that out. All right, now we're gonna go up to the third level where the master suite is by itself. And when we get up there, we're gonna go through all the numbers for everybody. What's that smell? That smells good. The tile. It smells good. That's the tile cutting. Are you next to a bakery? Yes. This is the master. Master. There's too much going on. Yeah. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beauty taste something real quick. Okay. Is me? Uh, you, not, not you. So this, you guys, this is the master suite. This is this whole level is all for the master suite. And dude, let me show you the master suite. So you got your own master suite here, and then look at the bathroom, you guys. This is what, why people love living in the city. This bathroom here. That's why. <laughs> Ooh, that's the bathroom. Are you tiling the floor up here too? Nope, this is going to be all hollow floors, but this is, these are tile for the um, shower, surrounding. Got it. Yeah. Well, let's go to the roof. All right, let's go to the roof. You good? This, you guys, is why people live in the city of Seattle. Rooftop deck, townhouses, modern. Is this right here? You got what are we looking at? You got the uh, uh, baseball field. You got the football field. You got the Puget Sound. You got Alcott Beach. You got the island, you got all those in downtown Seattle, guys. Incredible view. So the, so for you guys to tell, like I was calling Thatch a slumlord earlier today because I'm like, hey, are you gonna replace that roof? It's got like some issues on it and so forth. And he's just like, nope, roof's fine. <laughs> so, roof is fine, with my, pre, with my pressure washer. Yeah, and as a house flipper, I'm like, that roof's gotta go. We gotta right. change it out, right. right? And I just cost myself, you know, five, six, seven grand, <laughs> depending on what it is. So, uh, so let's go over the numbers while we're up here. And before we go over the numbers explicitly, if you guys have any questions and stuff before we dig into the numbers, feel free to put them on the Facebook page. Uh, we're also doing this live right now. So at the same time, for those of you guys, uh, we're gonna be posting this entire video on YouTube later too, so that we can do that and check it out as that way as well. So let's go ahead and write some of these numbers out. And, uh, and if, does, does anybody have any questions right now? You know, more there was a comment and a question around uh, getting the capital to start this. I mean, yes. This sounds great, but where do you get the capital? That's like a bigger hurdle. So where right. You, where so you, it, it, so any advice? I was gonna say it depend on what level you at. If you don't have no money and you have no experience on doing anything like this, then you know you know this. You got to be a master wholesaler to go learn how to find the good property, the great deal property, and then you can wholesale them and start building your cash and getting the experience at the same time but working with side by side with investor. And you get enough of that experience in and you start to stack enough money, then you can start pulling the trigger. I don't recommend if you don't know how to do this, you start with flipping houses and then burn houses. Then I bet you you burn obviously townhouses and apartment building. So what we're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna ask, ask that question again. We're gonna do it from here so we can cut it at a point. So, all right, Thatch, we just went over through your, like this whole project. This is a $1.5 million purchase project. 1.5 million, yep. 1.5 million pro purchase project. You got three new builds here. You also got the construction costs yep. and everything. If you're brand new, yeah. right, starting out, and you don't have that kind of capital lying around to be able to buy, or relationships even, to yeah. be able to buy yeah. this Seriously. type of project, what kind of advice can you give to newer investors to yeah. be able to, to generate capital, to be able to find money to buy deals, right. to be able to pretty much start in real estate? That's right. Well, you know this, okay? If you're brand new in the game, you haven't done a flip, um, and you don't have any capital, you have no relationship, then I would say learn to go master being a wholesaler. But not just any wholesaler, learn how to master finding the right deal, how to identify what a good deal is to the investor, what to a builder, and then go find those good deal, and then wholesale them and stack your money. Okay. And when you stack your money, and you do enough of these, and you get enough experience, then I think the next hurdle is start fixing and flipping or fixing and holding single family okay. so you get more experience 
create more relationships because you know getting a team to build something this big yeah you need a lot of people a lot of people once you get to that right then you work your way up so to go from not doing anything going straight to here it'd be a little tough but if you do it right you can get here in probably a year okay so about a year yeah right? that's if you're doing it right that's saving your money building a relationship having the right people right mental focus, hanging around people teaching you right people who you hang around is so yeah. important uh, not just for like the fact mentally up here, but who you hang around also has money you can borrow from as That's well right. and do deals Absolutely. with too, right? Uh, and so for those of you guys starting out, remember that message. It's easy to start as a wholesaler. It's still, you learn so much as a wholesaler starting out because you got to learn how to comp those properties. That's you got to right. learn what ARV is. You got to learn the Cost construction side. Yep. You got to learn all this stuff. You got to meet the other investors that are going to buy those projects from that's you. Right. And then the key is how do you get out of that as fast as possible right. so you can be like and the investors the buying it. And that's the key. Don't make that the end game. Make this the end game in your lifestyle. And the last key, save your money. Save your money. <laughs> so I know so many house flippers that make a ton of money and they're broke because they spend it yeah, all. I know, but you build it. You know, builders good. too. I know builders that make a lot of money and don't save the money. Because it's easy to get the money now and then not master instant gratification. Instant gratification. Yeah, people people don't, they, 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 they don't want to delay instant gratification. That's the hardest thing, playing the long game. Play the long game. So I guess that would be another third point is play the long game in this and think like 10, yeah. 15 years out as That's much it. as possible. And you'll be your future self will thank you because you are gonna be hopefully be alive to 10, 15 years from now. Right. And that person's gonna want some extra cash and not have and, to keep grinding yeah. it every and day. And if you're young, get inspired and follow this message, folks, because you're gonna blink, 20 years gonna go by. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so let's go over the numbers in detail. I'll let you do the writing. Okay. All right. These are fast, whatever. All right, so you have here, you have a, you have a fourplex, hold on, fourplex, yep. plus one single family. That's right, I, when I first bought it. And this is uh, two lots, right? Two lots. One lot, number one, number two. All right, cool. And you bought both of these, purchase oh, price. One million five hundred fifty thousand. One million five hundred fifty thousand dollars combined. Right. All right, so fourplex, single family home, two separate lots, one million five hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's right. All right, cool. So let's focus on this one first. Yep. Right. So on this one, you're building three, town three townhomes. That's right. Okay. Now, what is the cost per construction? About it's um it's about two hundred. We it costs about two hundred and thirty, two hundred twenty, two hundred thirty bucks a foot to build these. Okay. Okay. Uh, we are eighteen hundred square feet. Um, so so I don't have all the number with me, but I do know that if I sell these for nine hundred thousand, mm -hmm. I will make about half a million dollars for all three total. Total. Right. Cool. Okay. So, so, so that's eighteen hundred times two thirty. Yeah. Uh -huh. You said yep. four hundred fourteen. Four hundred fourteen thousand. Four hundred fifteen thousand. Right. Yep. For uh, per eighteen hundred per unit. Yep. Per unit. Okay. So and you're doing three of those. Yep. Right, so times three. Mr. Math quiz. Uh, uh, <laughs> 1.3 uh, 1. mil. Yeah. Right? Yeah, 1.245. Yeah. One, two, four, five yep. thousand. And then you're going to have uh, cost of capital, right? Yep. So uh, capital, or was it lender? Yep. Lending costs? Yep. Right? And then you're going to have selling costs? Yep. Right? And then costs? And then you're gonna have you know all that other crap that comes yep. with that taxes blah blah, blah whatever um, and then what else are we missing holding costs right? holding costs holding costs well, lender costs the same thing oh uh, yeah whatever yeah. holding costs yep and I'm just writing these all out yep and when it boils down to like going into all these numbers here you said roughly after everything your net is five hundred thousand is a roughly five hundred thousand that's right. And that's after selling. That's after paying the commission, carry uh, costs, everything. Yeah, commission. There you go. Commission. Yep. Everything. Everything. So, so you have these other aspects there. Sells it for. So you're selling these for nine hundred thousand each. Yep. Nine hundred thousand each. So resell. So ARV. Well, resell yep. technically. Nine hundred thousand times three. That's two, two point seven million dollars. Right. All right. Then you guys, you guys can see here that. There's a difference in construction here. So you have 2.7, 1.2, then you're talking 1.9 million, yeah. right? But he had to buy the property, which is yep. a combination of 1.5, yep. plus selling, lending costs, selling costs, holding costs, and that nets 500 grand total at the end of the day for this, for this, section, for only. this section only. This right? section only. Now, you have the fourplex. 
okay? So when you have the split, this is, so without getting into all this stuff, there's some cool tax stuff that you can do with this, right? Like with, you know, which one of these has your cost basis, which one you're moving right. around to, That's but right. we're not gonna get into all That's that right. tax That's stuff right. because we're not CPAs and That's tax right. attorneys and That's all right. that stuff. But there's some cool stuff you could do with That's this right. on a tax basis for sure. And definitely, all right, so the fourplex, you have uh, four units. Yep, all one bed and one bath. One bed, one bath. And we were getting 1,200 bucks. So each unit. 1,200 a month rent. Yep. Each. Yep. So each. All right, so that equals 4,800. Yep. A month. Yep. All right, okay. Then, hold on. Then I put $5,000 each unit. So you get, so you get 5,000 a unit yep. for a wall. Yep, a wall. One wall. One wall. <laughs> <laughs> One wall. So you put twenty. So you put twenty grand in. Yep. For four walls. That's right. <laughs> I mean, there's more to this sheetrock, electrical, all that kind of crap, right? Uh, and that then led to twelve hundred turns to two thousand. Four, two bedroom, one bath. That's right. Right. And now your rent went from twelve hundred to two thousand to two thousand times four per unit. Yep. So that's equals. 8,000 in gross rents. That's right. Right? That's right. So it's gross rent. Versus 4,800. Right. 20 grand. So if you guys, sometimes what you look at for these things is that 20 grand netted him an additional, uh, what is that? 2,000? 30, 3,200. 30, 30, yeah. Right? So your cash on cash return per year, uh, when you multiply 3,200 yeah. times 12, right. is, what is that? Like that's almost 40 grand. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's so almost 40 yeah. grand. 40, that's a 200% return. 200%. This is why this is this is why, why most people miss this opportunity. Yeah. 200% yeah. return investing 20 grand. Yeah. And then the next year it's just infinite after that's that. That's right. right. So 200% compounded all the time. That's great. Now you're not done with that though. Not done with that. All right. Okay. You're going to then do in the and backyard. In the backyard, you guys. I'm going to take my 500,000. I'm going to take this money and I'm going to move it over here. Yes, dude. I'm going to build me a six micro apartments. The average unit of 300 square feet apartments. It's gonna cost Six. us about seven hundred thousand to build that. Seven fifty construction. Yep. I got five one bedroom and five, one five one bed. Yep. One bath. Yeah, up. And it's then all like IKEA stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's a micro apartment. And then one three bedroom. How do you get a three bedroom in there? I know. It's crazy. Right? Like, I know. I don't know. I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> so, three bedroom. All right, so you got six units, yep. so six units. And what's your gross rents? This here is going to be 1500 each. Okay, so 1500 each. Yep. Okay, and then this here is going to be like uh, 25 to like 2800. Do 25. Yep. And then, so, so what is that? Five to six. That's, uh, sorry. That's uh, uh, 6,000. That's 6, that's one that I'm sorry, no, that's 7,500. 7,500, right? Yep. Plus 7, this. So you got, you got 10,000 right there. Plus 2,500. What? Gross. This is 2,500, yep. so that equals 10,000. That's so, it. We got 10. So plus 2,500 equals 10,000. 10,000. Gross rents. Gross rent. And up here, you got 8,000 gross rent for yep. the four planks. Yep. And then the, so that's 18. And 18. For the two. Yep. So 18,000 in gross rents. That's right. In a, a month in gross rents. And then how much is all the this worth? I already comped it out based on the rent, based on this area. I can sell this 10 plex with the kind of rent for a minimum $3 million. So that's the $3 million uh, basically value. Value. So, and why did he say that? So pretty, let's simplify this, right? You called this a 10 plex. That's right. It's a four unit and a six plex. That's right. But it's on the same lot. It's on the same lot. So that's a 10 plex. Yeah. Now that changes the financing terms completely. That's right. Right? That's right. So for those of you guys seeing it here, he bought a property for 1.5 million. To summarize this up, two properties. He did three buildings here. To make the money. To make the money. So I can build this over here with very little cash. Very little cash, yep. 500 in, right? So he only had to come up with the 250. That's right. Right? At the end of that, this 750 micro unit plus the fourplex is now worth three million. Right. But you technically, you know, you had some cost factors here. Because let me ask you a question for, for yeah. simplicity. Is this 1.5 million here? Uh, is it, do you have any of that split on this side or do you have it all on here that you're eating your I cost of? A lot of it split over here so okay. I can have less, right, tax? Uh, yep. 
and then I bring it over here, and then this is where I'm going to keep all of it. Got it. So your basis and all your thing like yeah. that. So, so at the end of the day, you probably have two million plus equity. Easy. 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 Right. After all. Said and that. over two hundred thousand dollars a year in passive income. That's awesome. Yeah. So let's talk about. Let's simplify because you're good at this. Let's make this a very quick video on uh, the difference between single family home right. lending yes. versus multifamily lending. That's right. So. So we're going to talk about single family home for lending for permanent financing, right? For permanent financing. Right. For, we're going to talk about single family home lending for permanent financing versus multifamily lending on permanent financing and specifically on this project that's sitting right here next to us, which is the roof of a fourplex that Thatch had bought at one point on top of another bigger package that he had bought. So if you're looking at this fourplex here, you have a four unit, is that single family permanent financing or is that multifamily permanent financing by itself? Single family. That's single family. So as far as that, that's a single family finance to a lender when it's one to four units. That's right. Right? That's cool. Right. Now, you have anything over that, five plus, right? So five plus commercial. equals commercial that's right. lending. Okay. So on this four unit here, right there, if you had it by yourself, yeah. how, do, how do lenders uh, comp the value or like appraise the value of the property. They appraise it for what other four packs are selling for in the area okay. and what rent is happening in the area. Got it. So a on this here, they, they appraise for other four packs for comps. That's right. More of based on resale. On resale. resale. That's right. And then they then they take into consideration rent. is maybe, maybe basically they maybe rents. That's right. Right. That's right. And that's maybe for your qualification. That's right. So this is how the so the single family units one to four comp based on appraised value of sold comps, and then they count the rents only to see if you qualify. That's right. For it. That's right. Right. That changes dramatically though with commercial. That's right? it. Okay. So if you're at a five plus unit, which you're gonna build a six unit in the back, a six unit in the backyard of this project right here, which is crazy. Yep. So if you have a five plus, so let's say you have a six unit. That's commercial. That's right. How do they, how do they compare that? So what they want is when they do the comp, they want to comp rent more more than anything than other building. They go rent first. Rent first, yep. and then they take a cap rate or something That's like right. that, right? Yeah. So the uh, so they rent are the most important part. Rent's the most important thing. And then it's your net operating income. That's right. Right. So they take your NOI. Yep. For this. That's right. Not just the sold. They're not looking for other six units. No. No. Very rarely, but they want to go off the rent. They want to go off the rent. Right. So the rent minus some expenses, that's all right. that kind of stuff. So your NOI. So that's the most important. That's thing. the most important thing. So you could buy a, a you could see that okay, a sixplex down the road sold for a million. Right. But it might be worth less because the rent's low. Because the rent's low. That's right. Because it's all about the rent. That's right. And maybe the landlord just hasn't raised the rent in that's a while. Right. right. And that's why when we build new construction, if I got the land for literally no money, you guys, the backyard, which I did and my cost of construction. They look at how much rent I'm bringing in and depending on how much it costs me to build it and the value of the land, which is nothing. So if the rent's high enough, I can actually get all my down payment out later wow. when I get done with this. Because it's because it- Because the, the rent's high. Because rent's high. That's it. Just by raising the rent. That's it. So you put in, so for instance, we talked earlier about how in the fourplex that he has right next to us, you added one wall in each unit and raised the, and basically made a one bedrooms into two bedrooms. That's right. You raised your rents by 800, 800 bucks. That's it. That's right? a big deal. Big, big That's a big deal. deal. Big cap deal. rate. Big cap rate. That's, That's like a whole other unit. Season. But that doesn't matter if it's a fourplex. That's right. And this is what the key is. So what Thatch is doing is he's adding a six unit to the back of this fourplex, and that's going to make it a tenplex. And then later on, when I sell it, oh, you know, when that time comes, I'm selling the whole building as a tenplex. It's going to be a tenplex now. That's right. And so when someone buying there, they're going to buy in based on the rent on the whole tenplex, so I can get maximum money for when I sell it. Awesome. Yeah. And so that's going to make it. So you basically went from single family financing. That's right. And by building that commercial unit in the back, you go to commercial financing with the tenplex. Yeah. There's that eight hundred dollar increase in rent that you just did per unit. Deal. Huge value increase. And that play a big role in how much money I get back out. Yeah. Right? So you have no money in. I'll have very little money in this property when I get done with it. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's just a little quick breakdown. The big thing that you look at in when it comes to commercial financing versus single family is your rents, your net operating income, and then of course your cap rate. And cap rates 
are determined based off the market you're in That's right. and what's going for the A. So this is going to be a brand new A-class property, That's right. right, in Seattle in a nice area. So you're with going the to view. Get, with a view. Yep. So that's going to get like actually technically and that a low will have rate. a rooftop deck in the back. Awesome. I'm sure if you guys watch the Bigger Pockets, there's plenty of videos on the YouTube channel talking about cap rates and how they work and all that kind of stuff. So check those out, Bigger Pockets. Uh, make sure you subscribe to BP as well. Uh, Thatch, do you, you know, this is an awesome project. Make sure you guys watch the whole video. If you guys, uh, we just watched this huge project with Thatch. Um, do you guys have, now we're going to switch over to Facebook really quick. It's uh, stand over here so we don't have to get distracted yep, by uh, yep. the wind blowing that. And then, uh, so we're going to talk about, we're going to talk to Facebook now. Is there any questions from Facebook while we're in? Now, before we Sorry. answer the question, let me just how you think about the takeaway. Oh, let's the, uh, summarize that. Okay. So, so that's what are your takeaways for the, today? The, the takeaway I want you, everyone to take away is this, okay? Is all this sounds great. It doesn't mean anything if you're playing in the now, working towards the future. This means more only when you can stand in the future working back to the present and everything you do, every strategy you think about, every money you uh, borrow, every hammer, you, every nail you hit, every relationship you build is gonna mean something because you're working towards and getting closer to your end game. So if you don't have an end game in mind, you will never go through this because you have no reason to go through this. Because you just wanna just get in and out, in and out and get out of there. So start the end game, folks, and then these kind of things will all come together for you. Awesome. Thanks, brother. Yep. All right. Do we have any questions from Facebook? Not so much, but because <laughs> it was so explained awesome. The, you explained everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but when looking at building, how did you decide to do a sixplex on the back? Is that is that predicated by zoning or made it like? That's that's right. That's a great question. That's a great question. So why I decided to do a six unit because the zoning here said I can do townhouses and apartments. And so knowing how much land I got behind that building, then I asked the architect, what is the maximum number of units I can put on this building, on that lot in the back? Because that lot's only like 2,500 square feet. And to the maximum, it's six apartments. And so that's how I got six. I want to maximize the highest use to make sure that I get the most return on my investment when I built that back there. And I guess the, uh, the, the moral of the story of that is always looking at the zoning yes, on your project. that's the whole key. We have a whole thing like uh, uh, where we bought projects before that had amazing zoning on it, but we never looked at zoning in our due diligence ever uh, because we were flippers. That's all that's we right. looked at was flipping the house. And now we look at zoning on everything. Not everything. And that's the key thing. I look at that before I do anything. Yeah, I'm embarrassed to say I have a rental I've owned for three years that two years into owning it, I never looked into zoning. And I found out two years after owning it, I can actually like easily peel off part of the lot and build a duplex on here. You go. The other lot. And that's and free had, money. That's free money. And I would have sold it and not even known that if I didn't look at something. Yeah. You gotta know so, what I'm doing today. Yeah. I own a I own a whole bunch of single family home all around town that's still in single family zoning. And I'm I'm going in the backyard of every one of my single family and I'm putting a detached eight hundred square foot and I'm gonna rent those out for like two thousand bucks. Every yeah. one of those single family accessory homes. dwelling unit that's, that's, awesome. that's awesome. Seattle. Seattle allows you to yeah. do that. So how yeah. do you maximize the value of every lot that you ever have right. or every property that Because I'm get? thinking how do I get more passive income without any more capital yeah. with very little capital really the key and doing single family detached is the key i've got the land for free cost me x amount for 800 square feet and i can rent those two bedroom 800 square feet easy for close to two thousand bucks awesome yeah yeah so these commercial loans um for takeout loan that means, they, that, that means cashing out, like yeah. being able to take money out. The easy way to say is that they take a look at how much rent you're bringing in, what it costs you to build the building, right? How much equity you have in there. And they look at, they basically lend me, what they they let up to what I call a debt to ratio 1.25. A, de a, a debt ratio, oh okay. sorry, a debt service ratio. Debt service ratio, 1.25. And so if I meet that. Uh, what a debt service ratio is, that. sorry, to explain yep. that is, what is the amount of rents you're bringing in yep. versus the ratio of paying back the mortgage? That's right. So you can have a three million dollar property, right? And most traditional lenders, would, you know, most traditional thoughts for us is seventy five percent LTV because that's most of the that's time right. what most lenders max value they'll do. That's right. So if you have a, you know, actually let's keep it a million, keep it simple. If it's a million dollar property, yeah, seven fifty, right? right? That would be the max amount. That is the max amount for most commercial that's lenders. Right. But if your rents aren't high enough to service a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar loan you. they won't give it to you in a commercial world in a commercial world residential they will that's right. so but uh single family i'm uh, sorry commercial they won't it's your ratio 
So your debt service ratio that you look at, your seven to 50, then your rents, that's why it's so important, your rents, and then the debt, then the actual mortgage payment to pay back is in, in this case, 1.25, ratio of the rents versus mortgage. That's right. And that's why with the same loan I have on a fourplex, when I added 800, $800 per unit times four, I added basically uh, 800 times four, $3,200. Times 12. And the loans never changed. Yeah. So that means that I, my, my rent went up so much higher and that's why I can get money back. So easier. to give you guys the math, so in this property here is fourplex, you raise the rents uh, $800 per unit by making them two bedrooms instead of one bedrooms. That's $38,400 uh, that he increased That's right. his rents by per year. And the loan never changed. And the loan never changed. Now, what does that do for the cap rate? Yeah. What do you think the cap rate is here? Oh, easy, 4%, four okay. cap. So let's call it 4.5. Yep. So okay. at a $38,000 rent increase, yeah. without doing anything else, just raising the rent by that much, he then raised the value of the property nine hundred and sixty thousand yeah. dollars here in Seattle, Washington, yeah. because the cap rate here is four percent for brand new builds. Yeah, so that's how crazy it is. That's that's just raising the rent. So you raise it <laughs> by a million bucks. And let me say this to you: in this area, every ten year it double in value. So this property, let's say it's worth three million. I'm done. Ten years and it's gonna be worth six million. Twenty years and I'd be worth twelve million. So twenty years from now, that ten plus would be worth twelve million dollar in uh, 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 in value, and I, the loan will be pretty much so paid same. down. So yeah. That's how much equity I will have you more in the next 10 to 20 years. Great question. Yeah. So Tell. I think that summarizes most that's it. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, Liz Alvarado, who would you reach out for a commercial loan? It depends on where you are. It depends on where you are. <laughs> so right? I, I would say my first thing is credit. Go look for your local credit unions. Yep. Uh, your local, your, they want to build relationships with investors. So uh, depending on where you are, Liz, uh, definitely go to your local credit unions yeah. first. Those are good. And there's plenty of portfolio lenders, portfolio lenders, the key word that you're yeah. a commercial lender, that kind of stuff. But uh, you're looking for those people, but credit, any other, do you have? No, uh, I would say, yeah, uh, for a typical single family, talk to your uh, the loan officer, and then use those guys know commercial lender in the area where you work, and they can refer you to you too. Yep, relationships. Yeah, okay. Oh yeah, that building cost me about, uh, to draw that building, it cost me uh, about $30,000, $30,000, to, to actually draw To draw it, design it, and everything. Right? Now, and go get about, permits for it. What about if you just want your architect to tell you what the maximum value, what the maximum use is for that? Yeah, I mean, if you want him to just tell you what it is, you know, you can get six townhouses. You know, if you know them, they won't charge you. But if you don't know them, they might charge you a fee to sit down with them and, and you know do a little sketch. Yeah, so my couple a couple hundred bucks or whatever, yeah, like thousand bucks, two thousand bucks or something. Yeah, and so like, yeah. well, if you just want them to look at the zoning and see what you can do to it, that's right. They won't charge. They, they won't, they most, most architects are going to charge you if they say, hey, I have a property. What's my maximum use for it? How many units can I get into it? Right. They can look at the zoning. They'll look at it. Most of them aren't going to charge you anything right. uh, unless they really don't like you. Then they might charge you something. That's but right. uh, but if they like you, they're they're not going to charge you anything. But you get them to draw stuff and actually do work, they're going to start charging you. And and a lot of these guys are pretty expensive. But depending on what part of the U.S. you're in, they might be really cheap. Seattle, not so, so cheap. So again, you guys, I want to inspire you guys to think bigger, think outside the box, think long term, think 10 year, think 20 year, dream bigger, okay? Raise your standard, okay? Who you hang out, who you become. That's the key, what you take away today, okay? Awesome. All right, we're done. All right, brother. Make Thank sure you, you guys comment, like, subscribe. Subscribe to Bigger Pockets. Make sure you guys follow Bigger Pockets as much as possible. Go to the YouTube channel. We're going to actually be posting a lot of this on the YouTube channel as well. Uh, and make sure that you guys go to the Bigger Pockets conference coming up in October. It's actually only a couple weeks away. Uh, and we're doing these live broadcasts and video broadcasts every single week. Hope you guys like it. If you guys want more property tours, go to BP Bigger Pockets on YouTube. And of course, we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.